Hey there, welcome to this video. My name is Jan Zuiderduin. I'm the founder of LearnSolidWorks.com. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how to model this beautiful Mobius pendant to SolidWorks. And you can download the SolidWorks working files of this lesson in the link under this video. All right, guys, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new part. So click on the new part and click OK. We're going to change the background color into plain white, and this gives us a better visibility on the screen. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new 2D sketch on the top plane. So click on the top plane in the feature tree and make a new sketch. And now we're going to draw a circle. So we draw a circle right here, and we use the smart dimension to give this circle a dimension of 100 millimeters. Just like that. And now we're going to draw a center line, and it will be a vertical center line from the upper point to this lower end point of this circle. And now we're going to trim one side of the circle away using the power trim. So click and drag your power trim over one side of the circle to remove it. Now we're going to close this sketch. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new sketch on the right plane. So click on the right plane and click on the sketch icon. And this time we're going to make a center rectangle from the midpoint. So click on center rectangle from midpoint. And we'll use this line right here as the center of our rectangle. And we will make sure this center rectangle is for construction. So click on the for construction box, click OK. Now we're going to add some dimensions to our center rectangle. So, so make sure that those two lines have an equal length. And we use the smart dimensions and give this line a length of 50 millimeters. Just like that. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a center point arc slot. And you can find that right here. And the starting point of our center point arc slot will be this, this point right here. And we will draw it up to here. And now we can use our mouse to draw the um, arc and make sure it looks like this. Awesome. Click on escape to close this command. Now we're going to add some uh, relations. Make sure that this line is tangent. This one will be tangent as well. And this line has to be tangent as well. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some smart dimensions. Make sure that the, that the radius of this circle will be 6 millimeters. Awesome. Our sketch is fully black now, so it means it's fully defined. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mirror this sketch. So click on mirror entities. We're going to select this uh, center slot as our entities to mirror. And we're going to mirror this about the horizontal center line in the middle right here. Make sure that the copy is uh, enabled and click OK. Now we're going to close our sketch. And it looks like this. Awesome. Now we're going to features and we're going to make a swept boss base. And our sketch profile will be our to our sketch right here. And the, the sweep pot will be our half circle. Make sure in options to set the profile twist to specify twist value. And the direction will be 90 degrees. Type in 90 and click OK. All right, it's already starting to look very interesting. You will get rid of the shadows and the ambient occlusion. And now we're going to move and copy our two bodies to make it uh, some kind of circular shape. So go to move copy bodies and we select those two bodies and we're going to click on the rotate and for the rotation we we'll use our origin. So go to the feature tree, click on origin as a rotation point, uh, collapse the feature tree again and we will change the value of the z x z into 180 degrees. And it will look like this. Make sure that the copy is enabled. So go to the bodies to move copy folder and click on copy and click OK. 
awesome. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to combine those two, those four bodies. So go to combine and select each of these four bodies and make sure that operation type is set to add. Click OK. Now we've created our base of our Mobius pendant. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to scale our body, but only in one direction. So this will be a lot of fun and take close attention to what I'm going to do right now. So click on the scaling type. We're going to scale about the origin. Make sure that the uniform scaling is disabled and make sure that the X and the Y are set to one and the Z direction will be 1.5. Now click OK. And look what happens to our shape. Pretty cool, right? Now our model is stretched in one direction. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new sketch on the top plane. Make sure that our display style is set to hidden lines visible. Just like that. And now we're going to make a circle. on this point right here. And uh, make sure that the size of the circle is 2.5 millimeters. Now we're going to make an extruded boss base. We will rotate our model a little bit. Make sure that direction one is set to mid plane. The length will be 40 millimeters and make sure that merge result is disabled. This way we will get two separate bodies. All right, let's change the display style. And now you can see our newly created body between those two layers. But we want to, we want to uh, pattern this body all the way, all way around. So therefore we're going to make a composite curve. So click on this line right here and select tangency. This will automatically select all the lines right here. And click OK. And now we've created a composite curve. Now we're going to uh, draw a second composite curve. So click on composite curve again. And now we're going to select this line right here. Right click and click on select tangency. Make sure that the four edges are enabled and click OK. And this way we've created a second composite curve. Awesome. Now we're going to hide this body. So click on the hide icon, the small eye icon to hide this body. So we only see our two composite curves. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a lofted surface between those two curves. So select the first curve and select the second curve already starting to look good looks already good so click OK and now you the next thing we want to do is we want to hide our two composite curves and we're going to pattern our body around this surface and therefore we're going to make a face curve so select this face curve right here Disable the, this box and make sure that our this box is set to one. And this way we'll get one face curve in the middle of our face. So click OK. Awesome. Now we have created a 3D sketch right here. Now we're going to make our main body visible again. Go to features, go to the curve driven pattern. The direction will be our newly created 3D sketch. So this one right here, click on it. The face normal will be our surface loft right here. We'll change the number of instances into 180. Make sure that equal spacing is enabled. And instead of uh, patterning features, we're going to the bodies folder. 
and we select this body right here. So click on this body and you will notice in the preview that it will pattern uh, the body all around this surface. Click OK. Nice. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hide our surface loft because we don't need it anymore. We're also going to hide our 3D sketch. And now we're going to combine all these different bodies all in one piece. So go to combine. So select all the bodies right here. It will take a while because it's our 181 bodies. And now make sure that the operation type is set to add and click OK. Awesome. So now we have just one solid body. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the material. So go to the plastic and click high gloss, white high gloss plastic, for example, and double click to apply it to our model right here. Now we're going to change the color of our outer surfaces. So go to the select tangency. And this will automatically select all our tangent faces. And now go to the face right here and change the color of this part. Now we're going to change the color from white into, into peach, for example, and click OK. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a hole because it's a pendant, and therefore we want to add a hole. So we're going to make a section view on the right plane right here. Click OK. And now we're going to draw a new sketch on the right plane. So click on the right plane in the feature tree, go to normal tool, and now we're going to draw a circle that we will later use to revolve. So draw the circle right here. So select the midpoint of the circle and the origin and make it horizontal. And the length between those two points will be 103 millimeters, just like that. And the size of this circle will be five millimeters, for example. Awesome. Now we're going to make a center line and we will use it later on for the revolve. So draw a vertical center line right here. Click on smart dimensions and the length between the center line and the circle will be 10 millimeters. Go to features and now we're going to click on the revolve cut. Our axis of revolution is already selected and click OK. And now we've created a beautiful revolved hole into our MOE shape. Now we're going to add the fillet. So click on fillet and change the size into 2.5 millimeters. Make sure that the profile is set to circular. And now we're going to select those two edges right here. This one and this one. Click OK. Awesome. Now we're going to copy our peach material. We're going to paste it on these two features as well. So select those two features and click on Paste Appearance. Now we have applied the peach material to our hole as well. All right, guys, that's it. Turn on the shadows. And make sure the shaded with edges is off. So disable the edges. And, and here is our final pendant. It looks very interesting from every uh, side. And I can imagine this is a very cool product to print in 3D. So if you ever decide to print this uh, pendant in 3D, do me a favor and send me uh, some pictures because I like to see it. All right, guys, that's all for this lesson. Now, if you want to become a SolidWorks Pro by modeling this awesome modern 177, this super yacht, 
this American Chopper, this Tesla Roadster, and even this Boeing 747-8 in SolidWorks, I want to invite you to attend my free SolidWorks workshop. And you will find a link to attend this workshop in the description under this video. Alright guys, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye bye.